So sometimes it happens in watch making where there's something that is so special that you just have to take a leap of faith. My name is Rahul. I was born in India. I'm still Indian, but I've been living in Singapore about 15 years now. Uh, I'm called Sean. Uh, I'm born in Shanghai, China. I'm now residing in Sydney. Acrivia, this brand, I've heard of. But Rich Up, Rich Up, who is it? I don't know. I'm very interested to understand it. It's a brand. 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 My name is Eric. I'm based in Sydney, Australia right now. Um, I came from Taiwan, so I was born in Taiwan, but I grew up here. Uh, I've been through a wild ride with independent watches. I think my journey to chase independent kind of stopped when I bought the RCC one. In 2014, when they released the Mono Pusher chronograph, because I think that was a phenomenal movement. And I had that movement as my wallpaper for, I think, three years for both my laptop and both my phone. So I admire that movement every single time I turn on my device. And that was my introduction to Acrivia. And I've been paying attention to their release from then on. I'm Furman. I'm from Sydney, Australia. I've been here my whole life. I think with RCC1, I uh, was shown an earlier render um, of just the dial itself. I didn't see the case at that point in time. I think this was just before its launch around back in 2018 in Basel. And to me, that was quite a refreshing change. And I think that it was the one that Rex really needed up to that point. He had a sort of look. You could see that he was very classically trained in the way he presented his movements, his hands, and the way he did things. But it just didn't seem to quite fit the case that he wanted to use. And seeing that dial, you sort of got the confidence that this is going to be quite a classic watch. And I think it was also important for him to have his own name on the dial, which really sort of helped explain to people who's behind the work. And I think going back to what makes independent watchmaking so appealing is, yeah, it's, it's about the people. And so to have his name on the dial, I think, really meant something to me. He's managed to make a, a simple three-hand watch look different, but classic at the same time. And when you turn it over and you, you just get blown away. So RCC1 has the same spirit as the Dufour Simplicity. It's to make a watch that looks simple, but it's very complicated internally. So like how they finish the movement, how Richard planned out the movement layout to make it look symmetrical and beautiful, how they plan every single finishing technique on the surface and on the back to make the light shine just right. And how he also learned techniques from before to elevate his polishing skill and his decorating skill to the next level. So that's basically what I was chasing. This time, you need to have a faith in the watch. It is a faith in the watch. It is that he can have this ability to put his design ideas, to put his thoughts out, through his hand, to make it a product in your hand. I think this is a very interesting thing. It is also a very interesting and beautiful thing. I as a customer, as a consumer, 能够参与到这个 project 当中，从它的 prototype 开始，慢慢一步一步到最终，你所定的手表交付到你面前，这是一个非常非常完全不同的一个消费体验跟这样一个买表的一个经历。I think. Collecting artisanal independent watches is niche for a reason because they are how the watchmakers want to express themselves. It's just being more personal. Like independence, I can meet the maker of the watch. 
I can know why he does this. Like I can ask him to explain why the movement was like this. For example, I can sit down or I can give Rich Hepp a call and ask him, hey, what are you doing in the future? What are you thinking of making? Why is this part on my watch like this? What was the reason behind the choice of finishing? And he'll go through it in detail and just tell me about it. The most memorable obviously was when he was visiting Sydney and he had a spare evening. So we took him to Lord Nelson Brewery, which is a, just a tr traditional pub here in Sydney. And you know, a, f a few beers down, you know, we, we had a lot of nerd talk, obviously. Um, but I, w we, we started to ask him his thoughts on anglage and all the hype around, you know, interior angles and, you know, the, the difficulty of um, anglage. Rex started drawing, you know, the different uh, types of anglage and trying to explain um, how he would do it by hand, what you could do with a CNC machine and what you couldn't do with a CNC machine, um, and the types of angles that he thought would be the hardest to finish. Um, and that, that was a really, really en enlightening experience um, because a lot of the assumptions that I had before um, sort of were proven to be untrue. And I remember going home just staring at the ceiling and looking at all the cornices and how <laughs> angles came together. It was a good memory for me. When I look at the watch, and I do wear it a lot, I, at some points in time I will wear it for six to nine months um, every day. It still brings that joy um, every time I wind it up. It's butter smooth um, and I still get that surprise when I turn it over and have a look at all the fine finishes, um, even three years in now. If you have a look at the almost household names, if you could say, of independent watchmaking, there's always a first mover's advantage. So if you think of Philip Dufour, I think his biggest contribution is that one, he popularised fine finishing. That was not something that people really focused on. And people, after seeing the simplicity, started to think actually a three hand watch can be worth so much and can be valued. If you think of F.P. Jean, he created essentially a singular brand that you can have an entire collection based around the brand with all sorts of complications. Every single watch that Jean makes, he's tried to reinvent the wheel. The way he does his chronograph, the centigraph, is completely different to the way um, chronographs are made by other makers. Um, if you think of Kari Vutalainen, he's proven that independence can run a good business. You know, he's got his own dial factory, he makes cases, he's supplying a lot of the independence and he's supplying some major brands as well. So I think for Rex, it's, it's going to be a challenge because he can't be the first to do those things again. But I think there are two things that he really needs to do. Um, and I think he is already on that path and hopefully he'll be remembered for these things. And the first one is that he's able to look ahead and bring classical watchmaking forward and really appeal to the coming generations. Um, and obviously to cement all that, he will need to invent something. He's already trying to be innovative in between the iterations of RCC1 and RCC2. You know, it largely looks the same, but it's a completely different watch. I don't think we'll see just yet what he's gonna come out with, but hopefully we'll make a lasting impact in horology. He represent the new generation, especially the current generation that came out around after 2000 to maybe 2010. He definitely represent that group. The newer generation will have a very long way to go because before them there's Dufour and then there's also John, who's also like very well established. And I think Rechep, with how carefully he plans his work, with like eight to ten years already planned out, with product already in development. I think he'd have a very bright future in the watch world. I think where Rajab ends up in watchmaking history is totally up to him. 
and I think that is one of the biggest compliments that I can give because he could continue down whatever path he is on now. The skills are already there, the vision is there. It's in the end, I think it's going to depend on what he wants to do. I think he could be one of the greats because he is fortunate to be recognized at such a young age. You've got Philip Dufour, you've got Kari Vutalainen who got real recognitions much later on in life. And for Rajab to get it in his early 30s, late 20s, that's quite incredible. And uh, I'm excited because may hopefully for the next 30, 40 years, I get to uh, see the work that he makes uh, and continue collecting his watches. watchmaker. Thank you.